Today I'll be talking about the Iceman, a Neolithic uh, mummy found high in the Alps. I doubt there's anyone in this room who has not heard something about him. And if there is, I suspect you've wandered into the wrong annual meeting. I've used the word reflections in the title of my talk today because I'm not an expert on the European Neolithic. On the other hand, I've spent years researching sacred landscape in other parts of the world while working with uh, the Iceman is specialists on our frozen Andean mummies, my interest in the Iceman grew. I began to think of areas that seemed to warrant further research and personal visits to the Iceman site. Today I hope to demonstrate that a theoretical approach focused on sacred landscape can provide additional insights into the circumstances surrounding the Iceman's death and the place where it occurred. Increasingly, there has been awareness of the important roles that landscape and ecology played in the lives of Neolithic peoples, and that beliefs about them led to impressive rock art, monumental structures, and the selection of places to make offerings to the deified forces of nature. Among these, mountains played important roles due to their being sources of water and of the weather that affected the fertility of crops and livestock. These beliefs are based on ecological facts and it is no surprise that they've been found in traditional cultures around the world, both in the present and in the very distant past. We all appreciate the Alps as a beautiful snow-covered region in which to enjoy sports and other activities, but this was not the case during the Neolithic when concern was focused on the utilizing of resources and surviving in the lower mountain valleys, a difficult enough task in itself. The discovery of the frozen body of the Iceman uh, demonstrated that humans had adapted to great heights and extreme conditions in the Alps as early as the Neolithic. Because his body was found at over 3,000 meters on a high pass on the border of Italy and in Austria, it was first assumed that he died from exposure. An aerial view over the Oztal range makes clear the relationship of sources of water from the mountains to the surrounding valleys. One of the highest peaks in the range is Mount Similo. Thanks to Google's little red balloon. Uh, Mount Similo, it's located in the center of the massif and marked here with the red balloon. The fertile Vinchkau Valley to the left was where the Iceman spent most of, of his time. There are few routes that penetrate the massif even today. And the only one that crosses between two of the highest peaks and the one that was used by the Iceman is the one here in the center, the arrow pointing to where the Iceman was found. Recent studies have concluded that this route was little used for transhumance during the Iceman's time, nor was there a major Neolithic settlement in uh, the valley to the north of the pass. This meant that there was unlikely that the Iceman had died as a result of a dispute over land boundaries or over grounds used for the grazing of herds, such as some theories suggested. There was also little trade with people in the north, and the theory that he'd been hunting when he, was, when he died is also unlikely given that his hunting equipment was unusable. So just what was the Iceman doing in such a formidable place? Yuval Castle is situated on a Neolithic site, and it's at the entrance. For those who are curious, I think uh, Reinhold Messner still owns it today. This is the path, uh, the route anyway, that the Iceman used to get up to the pass where he eventually was found. A side valley leads from the modern day lake at Frenacht uh, and follows a river to the pass, with the ice, uh, uh, illustrated here in, in the background. This provides a vertical perspective looking down at two of the highest peaks in the Oztal Massif. And the arrow here in between is one that marks the Iceman site. The article on the right, uh, the uh, route on the right, shows the one that leads down to a couple of Neolithic sites, not actual settlements, but sites. And it kind of spins off here to where the Iceman was found beneath another peak. Uh, one of the highest peaks in the, in the range. The Iceman's site is here, it was marked here. Of course, covered in snow right now. 
give you a sense of scale, these are people. And that is Mount Simalone, one of the highest peaks of the Lutzel Range. The Iceman site is located right here, again, covered in snow as it normally is. And this is Finalspitz, uh, one of the other two of the highest peaks in the range. It uh, turns out that the sun actually sets here at the uh, June solstice. And the sun has been depicted, of course, on rock art on, on the stone men here, and solstices have been found as important throughout Neolithic sites in Europe. The place where the ice man was found is usually covered in snow. It was actually here. Uh, it, it's an interesting, keep this in mind, this uh, red colored gneiss rock, which kind of borders the site. Here again, where he was found, and Simalown. As it turns out, the solstice sun rises from behind it in December. So you have basically uh, uh, the passage of the sun during the entire solar year. It's actually found at this spot. And the cap and part of the mat or cloak, as some people think, was actually found in this spot right here. What I think hasn't been noticed is this formation right here. It virtually looks like almost an altar or burial site. The art, uh, artifacts like the bow uh, backpack uh, frame and uh, ax were found here a little bit about five meters from where the, the body was found. Deep gullies are rare on mountain passes in the Alps. The sides of this gully provide general protection and the deepness allows for water to freeze and snow to remain and thus help preserve organic material, creating a kind of refrigerator. Dr. Hoffner found only two similar gullies in his search for them on passes in the Swiss Alps. In one of the two, he recovered uh, Neolithic items similar to those with the Iceman. A particular interest is a boulder in which the Iceman was found, and uh, it's likely that he, I feel, that he was originally placed in the hollow space here. That's the lowest point. I think that then later the body was slightly moved as you had the course of freezing, melting, and movement of the glacier and so forth. This natural refrigerator, completely with its own defrosting, uh, along with the freezing nighttime temperatures, would have helped preserve the body until it was covered by snow. As alpine snow, this probably would not be long in coming. The location of the ice man thus begins to make logical sense. It lies between two of the highest peaks that give origin to water in the valleys below. The December winter solstice rises from behind one of them and sets behind the other at the June summer solstice, marking the sun's yearly passage. The place is a gully natural protected both in general terms and by a hollow space wide enough to allow a, a body to be fit in its lowest point. The cloak and, and uh, the matting that were supposedly found with the ice man were also could have been used to help covering at the time. Of course, this would have helped. Uh, prevent uh, decomposition. Open air sanctuaries have long been noted in the Neolithic, and distinguishing ritual sites from secular ones is still a problem for archaeologists working a couple of millennia uh, later. Whatever happened that led to the Iceman being killed by an arrow, it appears likely that his body and equipment were specially placed, and since this was the time, at the time of death, it means that they were ritually treated. Here I use the definition of ritual offered by Alexander a performance that affects a transition from everyday life to an alternative context. This uh, just provides a, the drawing of uh, what, where the ice man was actually found in 1991. This is where the cap was. My theory is, is that the body was actually in here and then moved slightly. Years after the, the ice man had been found, it was discovered that he had been uh, hit by an arrow, one shot caused certain and virtually immediate death. The bowman was likely close to the Iceman to have placed a, a shot that was near perfect. The Iceman had been in good health when he reached the pass. However, he had eaten a meal before ascending to it. He even ate ibex and deer meat while above 3,000 meters within a few hours of his death. 
these meal me uh, meals of meat were not part of his normal eating habits. The types and the conditions of the artifacts found with him add to the impression that he was not fleeing an enemy or making a normal crossing at the pass. Twelve of the 14 arrows had not been finished, and two that were complete appeared to have been deliberately broken. The bow was also unfinished. Thus, nothing of the bow and arrow assemblage was usable. The dagger also had a broken tip. Deliberately ritchy, ritual breaking of weapons at barrels have been found elsewhere in Europe and some sites dating to the Neolithic. No artifact has brought more attention to scholars than the copper axe. Barely used, it is one of the earliest known copper axes in the region, and copper tools mark the beginning of metallurgy. It, therefore, must have had considerable value at the time, yet it was not taken, instead laid near the bow in the backpack. When taken together, the amount, the variety, and the condition of the Iceman's clothing and equipment suggests that he was not an ordinary journey when he died. It's now to go sort of beyond the personal Iceman story. It's difficult to understand the Neolithic mind of five millennia ago. No written uh, records exist, and of course, evidence has been lost and destroyed. However, Neolithic rock art and burials suggest that the Iceman shared a broad cosmological view of the world with other populations in the region. Three of the most important rock sites in the Alps are found at Mount Bego, here, <coughs> at Valcamonica, and at Lagundo, near the uh, Icepan's home. The interpretations of rock, arcs, uh, rock carvings vary, but in broad terms, they support a primary reason for their function relating to fertility. And two of these three areas have all been tied to sacred mountain worship. But we're more interested in the region near to the Iceman, where menhirs appear, along with petroglyphs. They were mainly just petroglyphs down around Mount Bego. Valcamonica is not far distant from the Iceman's home territory, uh, and he must have known about it, possibly even visited it. The flint, for example, used by the Iceman came from the Lasani Mountains. And they were even more distant than, uh, than Valcamonica. And the artifacts that were found in Remedillo bur burials here uh, were virtually still further away and identically to those found with the Iceman. The Neolithic rock carvings and the stone menders have often been uh, interpreted as being linked to fertility and sacred landscape. Supporting mountain worship at Valcamonica is the associate of the sun's passage aligning with mountains that dominate the horizon as seen from the prominent rock carvings. Here is an incredible system of uh, petroglyphs. The interpretation of mountain worship is influenced by the sun's passage. And uh, in this case, one of the examples that was used by archaeologists there is that the uh, sun rises and sets at the equinox behind two peaks. Uh, this one this happens to be the, the setting sun at the equinox when I happen to be there. The depictions of anthropomorphic figures on men here is, is suggested by the carvings of daggers and axons above a belt. Sun worship has been assumed due to the existence of sun uh, symbols on several of the men here. They've been interpreted as either for worship of ancestors, uh, warrior ancestors, or of deities. In short, to have been used in rituals. The church at Lotch, uh, located right at the opening towards the Schnauz Valley where the Iceman went up to the pass, uh, had an altar stone that turned out to be actually a men here. Depicted on it was one of the few scenes carved in the Neolithic Alps of one man killing another. In this case, of a man being shot in the back by an arrow. Whether or not this refers to the Iceman can't be proven. But the men here's location at, in the home of area of the Iceman, it's dating to roughly the same time period, and the axe depiction on a ritual stone monument does suggest that the carving portrays an important ritual event, not a secular killing. When we examine the context in which the Iceman was killed, the location, the manner of his death, the types and condition of the items with him, and the site 
allowing for his body's preservation, it becomes more likely to me that the Iceman received ritual treatment at the time of his death. And since he was killed at or near that site, this naturally leads to the possibility that he was a ritual sacrifice. The Iceman was a remarkable discovery. Our, any interpretation of his death should take into account that he died in an exceptional way at a unique site that was itself situated in an exceptional location. And finally, that all occurred in the heart of the Alps, one of the world's most dramatic mountain landscapes. Thank you.